Hello world, welcome to my channel, Proteus Augustus. I'm an artist, scientist, and American constitutionist. Today is March 14th, 2021, and I am in a safe place. I managed to make it through tonight that I talked about in the last video. It was very difficult for me. I'm not a young man anymore, and I wasn't necessarily prepared for the scenario. Although I do have a fallback gear. So what happened was, uh, I don't know if I really explained in the last video, I've really been under a lot of stress the last three or four days physically, and it's taken its toll on me. You know, my back, my neck, you know, my knees, hey, whatever, right? I'm 60 years old. So I had to get my ID on the 12th. And um, that's what I scheduled, you know, my room for. And then I found out the storm was coming, right? No, I wasn't necessarily expecting that, but I had options. I might've wanted to go up to Denver earlier after I got my ID, you know, based on some conversation or whatever else I was having. <clears throat> but when I went to, like I said, I got boxed out of my room and then all these rooms were taken up. I was in a situation where I had to, you know, still take care of my business on that day. I had to go get my ID, which I did. And, um, but that takes me a very long time because I don't want to take taxis everywhere. I have to try to conserve money somewhere. So I have to take some pain, right? But it takes me a long time to walk. I can only do like a mile an hour. And um, so that consumed a lot of the day and a lot of energy that I had. Right, and a lot of these places are weren't letting me. I mean, McDonald's wouldn't even let me have a hamburger. Right, I think McDonald's they don't want in person dining anymore, they just rather have people drive by. This is the situation a lot of people find out that if people drive by in their car and get their food, that they're saving money because they don't have to clean tables or silverware or any of this. And so now that everybody's doing it, they don't have to compete with the other restaurants that are bringing people in. I mean, eventually things will go back to the way they are. But I mean, God, not letting a man get a sandwich at McDonald's because he doesn't have a car, especially at this time in our pandemic when there's hardly any cases around here at all. This is just sad. It's just sad that these people are not resilient enough, you know, that they have to wait and beg other politicians for their freedoms. I mean, why are you people begging the Biden and all these other politicians? Let me tell you something. I'll get in that in the next video. I, I'm getting off. Of, I got a lot of things I want to talk about today, right? But anyway, so by the time the evening came, the weather, the temperature wasn't bad, but that's not the issue. The issue is the wind and the rain and how it saps heat from your body, right? And how do you deal with that? Well, without a shelter, okay, and without a bag, right? It's very hard to keep your energy conserved. So you ha you're gonna take some pain, right? It's not gonna be pleasant. The question is whether that pain is an indication that your life is in danger or not. Okay, so I wanna talk a little bit about that. Now, if you're a younger man, or like if I was even like 40, right? Well, 45, maybe even 50. I wasn't so bad at 50, but I'm having a very hard time um, keeping, you know, fat on my body. Um, I'm burning a lot of calories, right? And um, I tried to rebuild my body um, on that lease I had for a couple of months. And um, the problem was once my car got taken away, um, 
Let me just say, I don't really consume a lot of food. I don't know if there's something wrong with me at this point, but I'm finding out that if I try to put more food in me, it just makes me sick. You know, my some my stomach is so small. So, um, you know, what I'm eating is getting burned pretty efficiently and I'm not having any reserves. And if I don't have access to food, then I run into a problem, right? Like when I'm doing survival training in my car, even when I have my bag and all, I'm in the snow, I got food, right? I got supplies. So I could eat some sugar, get something in my body to generate some energy, right? So that I don't stop pulling on my muscles or anything like that, right? I want to try to stay into the natural um, carb burn when I'm in the field. You want to you want to have some carbs to burn. You don't you because if you go into your fat burning cycle, oh well, fat burning or your protein burning cycle, you're stealing those that fat away from your organs, right? A lot of people don't understand that your organs have a lot of lipid. Uh, molecular structures, okay, that support the organ, right? And then once you, that's why you should never take fat out of your diet. When I was growing up and all these people saying, oh, you don't eat fat, you know, whatever, these people shrivel up and die, right? They don't understand, right? You want a good body, right? You know, genes have a lot to do with it. You know, some people just are never going to have, you know, an athletic body because they're just not it's like feet like it is five different kinds of feet right you know um like i'm between a, a greek foot and a, a, a celtic foot beside the toe because they didn't give me big enough shoes when i was a kid uh, not by design but your feet are growing right and not everybody's a podiatrist your parents don't know these things right they take you to the shoe store you know, people are a little bit more advanced today, but in the old days, you go to a shoe store, they put a, they measure the length of your foot, and then that's the shoe they give you. There ain't no fucking goddamn room, you know, two months from now. You know, and then, you know, um, you know, I, as long, you know, I'd have to run those shoes as long as I could, and I took care of them. You know, I could, I got shoes that I got for a couple of years, right? Um, I'm an adult now, it don't matter. But once I got control over my own body, really, you know, by having resources to buy shoes and shit, you know, then I started wearing the proper size shoe, right? So right now I wear an 11, okay? And um, if I didn't have feet that were crunched in, right, my foot might be a little bigger. I just have different, my body's got weird proportions. I'm not, you know, I got big feet for a short guy. Anyways, um, so it's different kinds of feet, right? Right, and so a guy that's got a a guy who's got a Greek foot is going to be most of them are better athletes just by design, right? The way the foot can make angles, the way it can project itself. I mean, you look at an Egyptian foot where they got this big toe sticking out like this, right? And then all the other toes are like this, so you're pushing off the big toe mostly. So you could push this way. But when you got a Greek foot like your finger, like your middle finger, you could push in like this and your big toe's over here. So your big toe can go to the side and then this could push you forward. It, it's just a matter of design. And that's just genetic variation. The problem is, is these communists, right? And these other people who know nothing want to make us all the same, right? And it's starting to realize now that we're not all the same, but that doesn't mean that anybody gets an advantage, right? I didn't play in the NFL, right? I mean, I was a pretty good football player, right? If I had more support and maybe a little better genetics or something, I could have made it, but I ain't gonna cry on my swoop my whole life because I didn't make it to the NFL. I didn't call the NFL and say, listen, your standards are too high for a guy like me, and I wanna play in the NFL, so you have to lower your standards. I mean, that's insane, right? You got what you got, you don't choose who your parents are. You, we're all brought into this world the same. We open up our eyeballs and we look around, right? And some people have different perspectives as they grow up, right? And that's what's going to determine how they turn out until they can take control over themselves 100% as an adult. And then after that, it's on you, baby. Don't come crying to me 
about anything, right? I've suffered a lot in my life. I've lost, I've won. Um, you know, that's what life's about, right? And I, and you know, the question is, you know, how much adversity is really good for you and how much isn't? I mean, you know, the stress that I'm putting under right now and some of these other people that are falling homeless just because of this pandemic, the rest of the population who managed to survive, you know, the people that just go to a desk every day, they could go home and they could do their job, right? I could have my job, except I wouldn't be able to do any bench work. I got to go into the lab. I got to do the chemistry. I can't do that at home, right? But if you work for the government, you know, they come up with ways, right, that, you know, well, we'll just do a little bit of work. You know, you come in for a couple hours and you go home. You can still get your whole paycheck. See, this is the kinds of people, all right, that are looking down at us with our own taxpayer money, okay? They are very unproductive. They think they're self-important. And they are very demanding on the public's pocketbook. And I'm going to get that in, in, in the next video. But anyway, so, you know, um, <clears throat> I never had a problem extending a room before. I've been here since June. Uh, but I couldn't extend it because, and then I found out all the rooms were taken. So, and I had a prior schedule. I had to go get my ID. And um, so from the hotel across town, I had to take a taxi because it can't walk that far. I could probably do like two miles, you know, maybe farther, but you know, it's, it's just too painful, right? And I have to stop. It's just the situation I'm in, right? So um, it ate up a lot of my time and a lot of my calories. And then I try to get a sandwich at McDonald's and McDonald's won't give me a goddamn sandwich unless I have a car, right? This is crazy. I mean, now you're not a citizen unless you have a car, right? You can't eat unless you have a car, right? And a lot of these places, they, they realize that, hey, if people are willing to just drive up and get the food and they don't want to sit in here, we're going to save us a lot of money. So now they're pushing that more. They don't want to go back to normal. They want to stay this way, right? And that boxes out a lot of people. Right, so I finally found a place where I could get a ham sandwich. It was a really good ham sandwich near the registry, right? So I ended up getting my ID. I got my ID in Colorado. I did find out a couple of things that I'm going to have to tell the court. This officer apparently lied, or this um, person that I was dealing with at the registry was reading information wrongly, because he told me that Virginia suspended my license. She's telling me that's not why I wasn't allowed to. She told me that it wasn't Virginia, that Colorado suspended my license because they didn't have insurance, which is a complete lie. It's a lie. Listen, I'm not going to say their mistakes anymore. You know, when people should know as a matter of their profession, all right, or even common sense, I'm not buying it anymore. It's a, they, these people are just straight up liars, man. They're incompetent. All right, they make mistakes and then they lie their way out of it because they don't want to improve themselves at all. They just want the paycheck. They don't give a fuck who they step on. And more and more, just the average citizen is becoming this kind of animal wherever you go. This is the communist pressure, okay, that's been put on these children in the schools. And this is what we're, what we're getting from this, right? I'm going to get into that, like I said, in my next video. I just wanted in this video to explain a little couple of things about um, how to survive a situation like that. So my problem was I didn't have enough calories. I didn't have any food in my body. I had a sandwich, but you're talking about eight hours outside and wind and rain or whatever. And, you know, sub 35 degree temperature, you know, um, you know, 40 degree weather with a wind chill can bring you down to like 30, no problem, right? And it's gonna suck energy off of your body. So the best thing I could do was um, use some of my, um, some of my gear that I had, right? So then what happens is if you don't have enough calories, like when I'm doing survival training and, you know, I always have some kind of sugar with me, some kind of food, you know, so that they don't run out of energy. Because if you can't produce energy, I don't care what bag you get. Eventually, you know, even if you get a minus 30 bag, right? 
And if you're in there for three days and you got no energy, you're going to get fucking cold, man. Right? It just depends. You got to get out of your bag. You got to get food. You got to move around. The bag's only going to keep the loss of energy, right, from being fast. It slows the loss of energy, but energy is constantly being lost through the bag. So without the bag and without a windshield, I had to take it on whatever gear I could clothe myself with, which I do have some gear. Problem is, like I said, I found out that earlier in the night I ain't a young man no more. And um, not that I didn't know that, but I have it stood out. Well, the other night when I came back from Denver, I spent the night out. Um, it was really nice. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't much of a problem for me. I just got back and I had business and I ran out of time. And I figured I could get through the night no problem, which I did. But the other night was, was a lot harder because I had already... Uh, I, my pain level was already high from walking around trying to get my my ID ready. So by the time I was boxed out of all my situations, um, <clears throat> I um, didn't have access to food. I mean, where I was located, there's really nothing within walking distance for me to get any chow. I mean, of any substantial amount. So I had to go with the energy that I had. And um, one of the strategies, I mean, if you're in the woods and you got trees and grass and shit and there's water, I mean, by a stream, that's a good place to be because the water has heat, right? The ground is insulation to a certain extent, you know, and then trees can give you a windbreak, right? So I use these techniques. The problem here was is that I couldn't go much farther than where I was at the time when I realized I really wasn't going to get a room. And, um, you know, so I... I could only go so far. I went to that bench and then I had a choice, the bridge or the bench, I took the bridge. Um, no matter how you look at it, even if it's 35 or 40 degrees out with a wind chill and there's rain, um, that's gonna sap a lot of your energy, right? So one of the tactics you could use is you have to stay, if you stand up, and you have good gear on, right? You're limiting your heat sinking to the surrounding, you know, concrete or bench or whatever you're sitting on. If the bench is wood, that's better. But these benches are steel, right? And all they're gonna do is just keep sucking energy out of you, right? The problem with standing is, you know, I have my staff and I'm leaning on my staff, right? You know, take the pressure off my bad leg, my real bad leg. But what ends up happening is your body can only take so much of that. Now, when I was a young man, I mean, they, you know, in the army and stuff, you could stand for a long time. You could be out there for a long time and watching nothing. You just have to have the focus in your mind, right? So, um, I ran into a problem because um, I started having the inability to really create any energy, right? Because I was using a lot of it to stand. So at some point I had to go down, right? So then you get into these cycles of rest and, and movement, rest and movement. Because if you rest, right, you have to rest because your muscles are getting filled with lactic acid. It's starting to get painful and you're expending too much energy standing. So you have to conserve energy. So then you go down, you sit down or whatever, right? The problem with that is you might fall asleep. Right, because you, you, you go down to rest and you take the weight off and then before you know it, your mind might just take over and say, well, it's time to go to sleep now, right? And you can't control it, you'll nod off. That's dangerous, right? So by, by going down, now you're not generating any energy and you're starting to cool off. So then you start getting really cool. Then you gotta get back up again and then you gotta generate some energy by doing some pacing. That expends a lot of energy, okay? And without any candy bar or something like that available to you, you're gonna run yourself down and that's what happened to me. Um, 
I managed to make it. I um, got to a safe place um, um, when I could, and um, I was in a situation, let's say. I was pre-hypothermic, and um, I managed to get out of that. And, um, you know, um, with a little grace from some property owner, um, I managed to get out of that situation. And, um, but it was, it's terrible, you know. I'm definitely not the man I used to be, that's for sure. Um, and it's hard for me to keep fat on my body, you know, at this point for some reason. So without fat on your body, and without food in your gut, you know, that's a recipe for disaster. Because you're going to get tired, you'll fall asleep, and you might freeze to death. Even in 35 degree weather, if you don't freeze to death, you'll get hypothermic, right? When you're sleeping, and, you know, it, whatever. It's, it's a recipe for disaster, so you have to stay awake. Unless you're in your bag... Or you're in a shelter where you know that the temperature is not going to fall beyond critical level, right? And that's where a lot of people make a mistake. They look at the actual temperature. Let's say it's like 35, right? Well, you get a good brisk wind, you're down into the 20s easily, right? And that goes to a second gear, right? Your gear for 30 and above ain't the same gear for 30 and below, right? These are the distinguishments you have to make. I mean, now, you got a stomach full of food. It's amazing how much punishment the body could take. It could get very painful, but you won't die, right? Um, so anyways, these are the kinds of things you get to measure when you don't, when, you know, when, you're, when I'm actually doing survival training, I'm prepared for all that, but I wasn't prepared for this situation, but I know enough uh, how to keep myself alive and um, if I didn't have a go-to place um, for that emergency um, I probably would have had to go to the hospital because uh, I was pre-hypothermic man you know I've been there before so I understand it right and sometimes that's what's good about training like if I had a son right I'd take him out and I bring him to the limits, right? So that he could understand. You don't bring him to the, the limit, you know, the harsh limits, right? You work on these things gradually over the over the growing up of the child, you know, seeing how what they can handle, right? Even if it's a woman, right? You gotta train you gotta train in this area you gotta cha train your daughters too, right? This is a dangerous fucking place to live, man. Straight up. <laughs> You know, this isn't like Boston or a city and stuff. And maybe that's why these guys didn't understand me. I'm not, I might have grew up in a city, but I know more about this stuff than half of these guys around here, I could tell. I mean, just by the guys driving their trucks. Trucks are not good in the wilderness. My car is better than theirs, okay? They might be able to do rock climbing and stuff, but I could find another avenue around that situation, right? And it's a low profile vehicle. Right, so the, when the wind is blowing really high, it you know it it's not a problem, and that and being a low profile vehicle too, I could put my car like up against the berm, right, and the wind will blow right over my car, and that helps conserve the energy in my car. See, all of these things, all right, are things that are very important for you to understand, and unfortunately, uh, I don't want to talk about that again, but. You know, so I was in a situation too, honey, right? I know she can't hear me, but It's just, um,
there's just some things that happen to you in life that'll never go away. Boy, I am old, man. I am just not as hot as I used to be. <laughs> but, you know, maybe it's because of all the things in my life that I've been to and that I've done. But um, there's just some things that affect a person you'll never forget. And I will never forget her. And what happened to her? Now, I've done, um, you know, some serious uh, training in my life. And um, the other night, it just reminded me, you know, how uncomfortable it can be and how painful it could be. And I think that's why it's just triggering me because of not knowing exactly what happened, you know, and... Um, it's just a tragedy. It's not going to interfere with me getting on my life or anything. It's just always going to be there. And, um, the, um, the just, the, uh, the nonsense of the whole thing and, and what they were doing and how this happened or, so anyways, um, that's all I really want to say. I'm okay. And um, I got my ID in Colorado now. I'm going up to Denver tomorrow. Um, maybe I'll um, be able to come out of this soon and um, get on my life, right? And not have to deal with this. But, you know, I. What's going on down in Alamosa? I mean, they finally got this guy here. And I, you know, I just want to say a couple of things about that. I, I told the federal court, I'm like, how, how is all this crime going on down there with all these little amounts of people? They have to know. The cops have to know. The judges have to know. I would know. I've only, I was only there since June. And I come across all these motherfucking characters. They my people they are. When I started investigating my burglary, oh, that guy, I think they're saying that guy's name is Guzman. I seen that guy. It was somebody like him, his brother or whatever, right? Because once I started pressing people in the area, and I started pushing myself around, they started taking notice of me. You know, come by on bikes, taking pictures, crossing my path at lights, looking at me. Because there's only one street. They know I have to leave on that street. So they could just stay right up there and wait till I pass by. I mean, these people think I'm stupid, right? I'm not stupid, you know, but I'm not going to overreact either. And that's why I didn't deal with that guy, right? Because I'm not stupid. I'm not armed. I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm in the wrong, right? But I let them know that. And they sent this guy over with a teardrop and all his freaking tats up his neck and shit. You know, somehow all of that display is supposed to scare me. Well, I let that man know that ain't shit to me, right? And that I will defend myself against you, right? So you have to decide whether I'm worth your time or not. Or you just go about your business because I got no business with you until you make business with me, right? And that's the way this is going to go, right? Because I ain't going nowhere. And when I get down to my property, after all this, right, I'm not going to be, I'm still not going to be having all that. You know, I am going to push, right, the state legislature of Colorado to put into charter a state police. Whether the state patrol morphs into more um, jurisdictional power or not there needs to be a separate state police where these police officers have higher qualifications now right not your regular police officer we need police officers that have more character 
you understand me? That are not gonna take a few dollars to look the other way. They're gonna go in there and they're gonna grab those knuckleheads out of there and protect the people there. And that's gonna take time before these people feel safe. You know? I mean, these people, those people don't feel safe to the point where they're coming after me just for driving down the street. They want to know who I am. Oh, this is a free country. I got to tell you who I am, right? But that's what it is. These people, and some of them are just straight up criminals anyway. So it's hard to tell who's who's a good person and who's a bad guy. You can't tell. All you can do is strap and protect yourself, right? And when I'm going to, and you know, when I'm strapping in my area, when I go to back to my property or whatever, you know, I'll, if anything happens, I'll make sure it's legal. For sure. You know? But all they got to do is stay out of my way. Right? So anyways, hopefully, um, you know, these, these feds go down there and clear this fucking guy out of there and uh, see what's going on down there and hold that judge accountable. And other, other police and the judges down there need to be held accountable because if they didn't have the resources that they needed to address this threat to them, right? Then they could have just called up the state. They need to make these things known to the legislature, right? But that's not what they do. They're happy being down there. They're, those families have probably been there for 200 years doing the same stuff, chasing people off their property and shitting on it, right? Not to me. This is, this is what, the 21st century? Hey, no, this isn't 1820. I want to build an 1820 house, but this ain't 1820, right? So, anyways, um, you know, hopefully things get better down there by the time I get there. Uh, get my car back up and get this uh, these legal things squared away. And I need to be compensated for all my loss. They can't just damage me like this and take all my money. I mean, uh, you know, so, but hey. President of the United States is an enemy to the people, so who knows what's going to happen. I'll tell him that to his face, right? He's a, he's a communist and he's an enemy to the people. But anyways, I'm going to get to that in the next video. Um, so anyways, um, that's it for, for this one. Um, and um, I'll get back with you and um, let you know what's going on. And um, but right now I'm safe. Um, so, till next time. Think free and be free.